Hi, I'm Ed Kristen from AAA Mid-Atlantic's Approved Auto Repair Department. Today's video is going to be on preparing your car for winter, making sure that it's ready to go and everything is safe and gets you through the cold times. This morning we're going to talk about disc brakes and actually go all the way through with anti-lock brakes also. Uh, this is your typical disc brake system with the rotor, the caliper, the necessary mountings to make sure everything works. Inside here you would have disc brake pads, which is right here, that has a braking surface and a metal plate behind it. Uh, there is, the pad is connected to the metal plate, either glued or riveted, and what you need to make sure is that there is sufficient brake pad enough that you'll be able to get through the mileage during the winter time. The way this disc brake system works, the caliper is hydraulically operated and is going to squeeze the brake pads against the rotor and slow the car down and eventually stop it when you need it to. There are several other things that you should look at while you're looking at the brake system. The rubber hoses, that's right here. What you need to do is make sure that it's not cracked and deteriorated on the outside. It's hard for you to check the inside, of course, because it's inside the hose. But as long as the outside of the hose is in good condition and it's, let's say, less than seven years old, you're probably in pretty good shape. There are also some electrical connections on modern cars for anti-lock brakes, which is called a speed sensor. And this is the speed sensor wire. That wire is going to run down behind the rotor where we can't see it from here, but it's going to have a speed ring inside the rotor or on the axle that is going to pick up the front rotational speed of the wheels, feed that information back to the computer so that the anti-lock brake system can take and adjust the brakes as necessary to keep from locking them up. On the caliper, to make sure that the slides that the caliper slides on on most cars are clean, well lubricated with a high temperature grease and ready to go for winter. All right, now that we've talked about basically how a disc brake system works, let's go ahead and put the car down on the ground so we can get into the engine compartment and see the, all of the hydraulic parts and the ABS actuator and some of the other parts that go along with the brake system. Right here you'll find the master cylinder and it's about in the same place on most cars today. It's going to be filled with brake fluid, a hydraulic fluid that's going to operate the brake system. There's a couple things that you can tell from this spot. First, in most of the newer cars, it's a see-through reservoir, so you'll be able to tell what the level is. Now, a couple of things that you can determine from just the level that's in the car. Uh, as the front brakes wear, the calipers are going to push, be pushed out because the brake pad has been worn away, and then that's going to cause it to take more brake fluid to fill the backside of the caliper. So this level here is going to drop. So being able to see that there is a drop in the fluid here is going to tell you that there is wear on the front brake pads. Depending how much it drops here can give you a little bit of an idea of how much wear there is on the front brakes. And when you're filling this back up, one of the things that's very important is to make sure that you clear away any dirt from around it and make sure that you take and put it back on tightly. Brake fluids are hydroscopic. In other words, they absorb water. So you're going to have times when it's going to be a good time for you to change the brake fluid in your brake system also. Uh, the brake flush, as you hear it referred to by a lot of people, is doing nothing more than getting all of the contaminants from out of the brake system. That's getting the uh, pieces of hose from inside, all of the little pieces of rust and scale, uh, and going out through the bleeder valves in each one of the calipers or wheel cylinders, whichever your vehicle has. Then just beneath this, right straight down here, is the ABS actuator or ABS unit, as you, some people refer to it. It takes inputs from the wheel speed sensors to the ABS computer, which controls the actuator. The actuator is going to control the braking at each of the wheels, bring it right up to the point, that it's going to get it just before the wheel locks, which is the most efficient way of braking the car. And of course, when it comes to winter time, that's going to be a plus 
because it's watching the wheel speed. So as soon as that wheel locks up, the ABS system is going to back off on the pressure to that wheel to keep it from locking up and possibly throwing you into a skid. And the next segment is going to be on fuel systems. Let's go ahead and look under the car.